Chelsea Poe, and welcome to the Performers Pod. This is a space for performers to talk about our industry in a real way that we usually aren't given in the press. Um, we talk about things that are mundane, funny, heartwarming, kind of all things porn. This week's guest is Esperanza Del Horno. If you want to support the podcast, you be- can become a monthly member of my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Chelsea Poe. So I have some news. This is the second to the last podcast of season one. Um, we have some amazing guests coming up to finish up the season. Um, we're going to be back for a week of podcasts during AVN and 18 more episodes for season two. I'm also extremely proud to say I won the Why Not Cam Award for Best Trans Cam Performer. Um, thanks to everyone who voted. It was such a great experience just to be able to be back in that world, truly, and around our peers and just with other sex workers. Um, so Esperanza is a performer whose career is equally split between time in the LA porn scene and shooting all across Europe. We talk about all things porn performance and even get a cameo from her mom, which is a first for the performer's pod. The Wi-Fi was sadly in and out due to intense Amsterdam rain, so please excuse her connection. I also want to provide a trigger warning. There's discussion of rape and a sexual assault. I hope you enjoy our heavy, heartwarming, and truly needed conversation about porn with Esperanza Del Horno. Enjoy. everyone. Welcome to the Performers Pod. I'm here today with Esperanza Del Horno. Welcome to my podcast. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you. I'm very excited myself to be here. I th- I think like that you're completely both in the world of European porn and having your career start in the Netherlands and also being in LA porn. I think that's just oh, such yeah. a unique thing because I feel like the world feels so separate. Also, you recently came out as non-binary in like the coolest way and I have to talk to you about that that's so cool so yeah can you tell everyone like a little bit where you're from and kind of how you got into porn yeah okay so I'm a sponsor of Horno I'm from Amsterdam I was born there in 1996 I started in in 2017 uh, for the company Kim Holland Oh, I mean, started from the bottom, now we're here, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you've gotten AVN nominations. I feel like we should have met at the last AVN that happened, but yeah, yeah. we didn't, I guess. I guess we, like, That's I was looking sad. at photos, and I see the same people in between us. So I think we were oh. really close to each other. <laughs> but we just didn't meet. But one day, I hope we will meet. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, and- 2017 I started at Team Holland Mm -hmm. and then after my first two scenes came out mm, Real Babes this agency in Budapest that's also not that great (laughs) um, asked me to come and work for them so I did nine shoots in one week oh my god I know I had one day of three shoots in one day how did you prepare for that? Like, was were you pretty new to porn when that happened? Oh, yeah, I was pretty new to porn when that happened because my first scene, because nobody told me about the first anal and the first lem. So my first ever scene was an all anal scene. Wow. <laughs> before <laughs> porn, before porn, I actually liked anal. And now after shooting so much, I don't like it anymore. Like, the fun of it is gone. Because mm, porn makes you feel like a robot if you do anal. Because sometimes they expect you to do multiple anal scenes in a row. Yeah, that's and a hard like, thing to do. What do you like, expect for sure. me to do? Sure. Like, mm, one time a director got mad at me for, like, having diarrhea. But they barely m- let me eat in the days like it was my third day doing anal barely eating all I had was liquid and then they got mad at me 
it's ridiculous when perf- when yeah. like directors and other performers don't get what it has you have to go through to do anal scenes like obviously like I don't they have know it better oh they just don't understand like I've been to many like well-meaning like sets where everyone's like oh yeah go and eat something it's like I'm doing anal today I can't do that I'm like fasting no. all day until like after your scene yeah. and it's like 11 at night and you're like okay just like- eating everything they're like, why don't you take uh, what you call those laxatives, the anti-laxatives, so you don't shit. And then it's like, I can do that, but then I have, I'll be bloated. I have a tummy ache. Like, it's it's not helping. Yeah, I still uh, don't. I don't think people are meant to do that many shoots in a row. Like, no. just physically, I don't know how anyone could handle that. But it seems well, like that's kind of a normal thing in Eastern Europe for porn, though that you get booked and you shoot a million shoots in one week? Well, it started like at nine shoots and that's the most I ever had in one week. Um, in that week, I shot for uh, Rocco, for Pierre Woodman. Pierre Woodman was that set on which the anal thing happened. Because mm-hmm. he kind of tricked me into doing a double penetration scene but the scene never got released because I shit myself so you couldn't use the footage. I mean if we're, if we're talking yeah. real about the industry it happens sometimes when you're doing it anal, it's gonna happen and it's just like and people are like oh so gross and I'm like yeah well shit happens literally <laughs> shit happens see I would I had the opposite experience I was on like an all queer set it was in Berlin and it happened because um so I don't speak any German at all. I speak a little bit of Dutch, but so I was like, okay, I need to find an enema. I have a shoot today. I couldn't find one anywhere. So I'm like, it will be fine. Oh, it will be fine. And then it happened and everyone else on sets like, oh, it's no big deal. It's totally fine. And I'm just like mortified. I feel like queer people are just different than when you work with straight people. Because I have different worlds. straight industry friends and the things they say to me, it's like, yeah, sorry, girl, but I am not that famous. I can't do that. Like, I don't know how you do it. But I guess when you're like, I will say like pretty conventional mm-hmm. privilege, like for what they want in the industry. Because I was never that conventional. I had agents tell me, why don't you get braces? You have to change this. Like when I started, I had a, um, a nose ring. I had mm-hmm. a Medusa piercing. I had my ear stretched. And then I had to strip my identity. And yeah, I had my hair piercings color. as well. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like, oh, you will get more booking. And in the beginning, that was true. I got a lot of bookings. Like, after the first week, I went back to Amsterdam. Then I was like, oh, and then they were like, oh, browsers want to shoot you. And I thought, cool. But I don't know. Like, I don't hate the scene that I did. But mm-hmm. to play when you're 20, to play an 18-year-old who's a virgin, asking her stepfather to take her virginity and make her a woman. Y- yikes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yikes. Oh, one, of, one, of, one of the most problematic storylines. Um, yeah, so, but when I came back to Budapest, that week I only had one booking. So I went from nine bookings to only one booking and investing my money to stay there and be tested mm-hmm. and just wait and nothing happened. And then she was like, yeah, well, I have to shoot to London. And then I went to London. And then eventually mm, I came in Spain, in Barcelona. And then I shot with Nacho. With also, no offense to Nacho, because the scene was super quick. But having somebody <laughs> sweat all over you and basically have somebody else's sweat fall in your mouth, not my thing. No. <laughs> and he was like, Oh, that was so quick because we did a scene within an hour, but it was, yeah. It yeah. Was I, see, especially in BDSM scenes, I'm a person who sweats profusely whenever I'm scared. 
So like yeah. half the BDSM scenes, I'm just like so just like. Yeah, but he yeah. wasn't scared. He was <laughs> just he was cocky. He was like, yeah, that was quick, and he put his foot on my face, and I was like, I don't like it when people touch my face. So, and I know a lot of men like it, but I think it's horrible. Like, bitch, I don't want your foot in my face. Maybe if I suck on your toes, but you're not gonna step on my face. See, uh-huh. I'm like, I'm like, if that's a queer dom, I'm like, step on my face, go for it. Yeah, but- <laughs> a dude, a guy, not so much, yeah. not so much. I mean, his pedicure was not on point. <laughs> oh, so I started with Nacho, but then they were like, "Oh, you won't get paid." Um, like a week later, so I was in Barcelona, spent all my money to come there. And then I had to wait for scenes. Then I did come in a nice mm, model house from Emerald Babes. It's like mm-hmm. a sister company from Brill Babes. Um, and then I shot for this director from Porn Pros, and he was super nice. And I shot with this guy, Juan Lucho, and another girl for a VR company. And I think that was okay. It was like nice. And then eventually I got booked for Spain again. And then I was put in an orgy. But I was just an extra, you know, the one who sucks the dick and just eats pussy. And that's it. And I was How was like, the orgy? What's it? Was it good? Orgy was, it, uh, it's like somehow a best selling orgy, but I don't feel like they showed me from my best angle. But because we had three girls eating a cum shot they were like oh this is amazing (laughs) but to be honest it took so fucking long and one of the girls was a bitch like (laughs) a complaining a complaining little bitch you know that didn't want like they booked you you are the main person in the scene and then you're gonna be difficult like i was on set for Mm-hmm. like from the morning till the evening like till late in the evening whole day is set yeah and then outside with the pool because Wait, it was a so pool this party whole thing orgy. was outside yes wow that's very ambitious to be like full orgy outside wow. next to a pool yeah oh god that's- See, I'm so pale. My immediate reaction, I'm like, I hope everyone wore sunscreen. I hope. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I had, I, we had luck because you had a lot of Latina performers. Mm. Like, huh, that's another funny story. I met Caterina Moreno there, but then she didn't say anything to me, which is fine. Says, no habla español. <laughs> I don't speak Spanish. I don't. And this is going to be an interesting story because mm, then through another director, I met my old agent, Shy Love, from the VIP Connect. And now yeah. it's closed. Yay, woohoo, it's closed. But in 2017, I met her here in Amsterdam. We went out for lunch. And then she basically set up everything so I could go to LA. Oh, uh, through Tristam, He's like um, one of the nicer directors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like he, he also has a wife in the industry. I think they live in Vegas now. And he still shoots like amazing porn. Like he took the prettiest pictures in my career. Well, I felt like I was super insecure. And That's... the thing is in this industry, your weight will go up and down because it will, people will yeah. always comment on it. It's like then... Uh, like when you're 60 kilograms you're too fat like you just want me to show bones all the time it especially if you've been in the industry for a while like I've been in the industry for a decade so there's people who are like why don't you look like you used to look I'm like I was literally 19 years old like I didn't have boobs then I had an a cup (laughs) I'm not like being like yeah I need to go back to that I will never understand. So then I met Chai. Then in July of 2017, at the end of July, I went to the US. 
then we did this thing, and I think ATMLA does it too, because I know another girl, Luna, that was signed to ATMLA, mm. but then they make you go to Arizona, and then you get this Arizona ID. Where in Arizona? So come, uh, I think it was Bullhead, Arizona. Okay, so, that's so random. And then you have to wait a few weeks and then you have a US ID and then they're like, oh, get tested and you can work. Oh so my I God. Did that. Damn, I, did that. I had no idea. That's so sketchy. I know. No. I said, you're you're like breaking like, stuff on the industry on this podcast. I appreciate this. This is like uh, oh, awesome. Well, when I started, I was like, I was really ambitious because yeah i at first worked at the coffee shop you know the concept of here buying weed and having yeah a coffee the, the, the classic so amsterdam I, job oh i think your wi-fi just went out for a second or something's going yeah. on so I, and i was sexualized by men oh, can you um uh, go back a sec yeah the Wi-Fi is being really weird for some reason. Now? Um, I think your audio is at least. Yeah. No, you're a full robot right oh, now. I'm gonna... uh, hmm. Huh. Okay. I think I'm gonna pause. Uh, <laughs> right above my internet. Okay. I think it's better now. Maybe. Apologies to everyone listening. We're doing this from San Francisco and Amsterdam right now. So we're a few miles away from each other. So hopefully we can tag this, get back. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. We're back. Okay. We're, I feel like we're podcasting on like opposite sides of the world right now. So it's completely understandable that we have these issues. <laughs> Well, but, I'm still very happy we can do this. Yeah, so you were work, working at a coffee shop for people who haven't been to Amsterdam. That's where you buy weed. You can also get like an okay like espresso. It's fine. It's not great though, but <laughs> <laughs> if you have a good like barista, then yes. But otherwise, I would not necessarily go there for the coffee. But uh, my favorite <laughs> coffee shop uh, in Amsterdam, Dumpling, they have a good hot chocolate, like a mean hot chocolate. Do you know um, Born Yoggins? Do you know Born Yoggins? Yeah. It's yes. so fancy. It's like the fanciest weed place I've ever been to. It's so it's fancy, but I'm conflicted because most people that work there are assholes. I could see that. I can 100% see that. Because uh, when you work there, they have this certain arrogance, but so I quit working in the coffee shop because mm -hmm. I was like, why do I have to get sexualized by stupid men? Yeah. When I say I'm pretty. When when they're like, oh, you're so beautiful. And, and then it's like, oh, thanks. But when you're like, yeah, I know. Then you're arrogant. Mm -hmm. But if you hear, oh, you're so pretty. You're so beautiful every day. Yeah. You be arrogant then. When you're already dealing with, like, with the sexual harassment of that, it's like... Hey, I could be getting paid for this. Yeah. And so from that, I rolled into it because I had a stupid ex. Mm. Basically, he made me lose everything. And he already called me a whore with, without even cheating with for just being nice to somebody. So I was Ugh. like, let me just shock this asshole and <laughs> let's do porn. Hell yeah. Um, so fast forward back to the summer uh, of 2017. To be honest, I did like have a good experience that that period. Even though I got an STD from one of the performers, and I still oh, don't no. know who did it. No, because it was like one of those weeks where you were booked <clears throat> with multiple performers, mm -hmm. and then the week after I get tested, and then I had to cancel like six thousand dollars worth of work oh my god and i never got those scenes back either 
I'm just like so impressed how much international travel you're doing. Like I would go to Europe maybe twice a year at most, but it sounds like you're just like hopping back and forth across the Atlantic Ocean. It was the beginning. That was the beginning. That was the beginning. (laughs) Um, Because so is this all like your first year of porn? Yeah, this is all in the first year. Wow. I know. You went right for it. That's like that work ethic. I can't even imagine. Oh, I was like, I have nothing to lose. Mm. And because working in the coffee shop didn't make me happy. And in the beginning, I really liked working in the adult industry. And shy wasn't all that bad. But um, then I went back after having a lot of amazing shoots, like I shot a scene for dog parts. The name is so cringe. <laughs> I've seen my daughter go black, but somehow that scene was the best sold scene of their website in 2017. Congrats. Yeah, and I worked with Mike Adriano for the first time, and he's one of my favorite directors. Hmm. It's because for a mainstream set, he has everything in his bathroom, he has everything. And he's one of the only people that I know that always has food after your scene. If you did a blowjob scene or any other scene there, just tell them what you want to eat and they have it. Yeah, just and like I, making performers comfortable, I feel like is so much yeah, of a thing. As like a you're director, not a like, robot. That, and you're going to get a better performance out of your performers too, because they're going to be happy there and feel comfortable and not, yeah. you know, all these uncomfortable sets that we've both obviously been on. Yeah, like not eating all day, not, or they have food, but it's just for the crew and not for the performers. Oh, you've had that happen before? Yeah. Oh my God. I would just start throwing over tables at that point. I would, I couldn't because handle that. Their logic was, I don't even remember the company, but their logic was, I think maybe it was Hustler. But because they had multiple scenes, they wanted to do three scenes because it mm-hmm. was a DVD, blah, blah, blah. I think it was a cuckold DVD. And the guy wasn't even a really cuckold. He was one of the crew performers and he was just looking so mad. <laughs> so mad. I think they called him Kramer. <laughs> but it was... It was a questionable day, like, and they hated. They they openly said they didn't like my agent, and I'm like, but how did I get this booking then? <laughs> oh, that's so, so awkward. <laughs> it is super awkward, super awkward. So, um, the first trip in LA was kind of fun. It made me want to go back, but then I had to go back to Europe, and that was not that great of an experience. Because then I went back to Budapest with Brill and mm-hmm. I was supposed to work there. And I also tried to do it Orsi's model. Also not, not, not a good experience. Because with Brill Babes, what happened, um, they tried to get me underpaid. Mm. Like I agreed to this amount and then I got paid less. And then when I got mad about it, I was the crazy one. And then she supposedly dropped me from the agency. Uh, and I, I feel for, for. this industry, yeah. it's the people like to make people seem so crazy over the smallest shit. And it's always like women who are like in their young 20s. And I experienced this and it made me go just like wild for so long because you'll like say something very reasonable in the rest of the world and then people will be like no that's impossible that's not true and it's just like consistent gaslighting and that I think is starting to change a little bit so I think performers have more power but like it's still so prevalent well it depends on what kind of performer you are because um I tried to speak up and about real babes about multiple people but Mm -hmm. I always got the short end of the stick because then for Orsi's model what happened was this company wanted me to shave my arms and then 
I did it and then they still have something to pick on. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, no, no, I just won't do it. And again, I seen to this girl, Gina Garçon, because apparently they want you to be shaved everywhere, the whole top to bottom. Not one oh. hair can show. Like, what kind of oh. bullshit is that? Like, body hair grows that way. And then yeah, I had what this the horrible fuck? roommate. And it's funny because um, she did a scene with, uh, like, two friends of mine. She's mm-hmm. a fucking bitch. She got me kicked <laughs> out of the model house. Oh, shit. Because I was supposedly too loud. Bitch, I slept on the couch while she had a bed. And her name her name is Luna Corazon, but she doesn't have a heart. Like, she's hard. Oh, damn. I really hope uh, she's not in my Twitter DMs uh, after this podcast gets posted. <laughs> I mean, I know she blocked me, so I, I don't think okay. so. Okay. I didn't even yeah. block her. She blocked me. I have a lot of people like that as well. Super mean message about that she was happy that I got kicked out of my model house and supposedly my horrible attitude. It was like coming from you, but okay. I have so a lot. Then, yeah, I had experiences the, with that. There was yeah. this girl who was like, I want to kick your ass, but she had me blocked so I couldn't see it. I'm just like, what is that? No, I mean, I became less violent. It's it's just taking my energy that I can invest in better things. Mm-hmm. But what happened was I spent all my money going to Budapest mm-hmm. and then not getting work. And then the worst case happened. I was supposed to go to Prague, but then I had to cancel because guess what? I got two STDs in Budapest. Oh my God. The three little shoots that I did, I got two. <clears throat> so I had to cancel all my work in Prague. I'm so sure that happened back. to you. That has to be like such a hard <clears throat> experience to go through. Like, this was my third STD, thanks to porn. Or no, fourth SD, but third time getting something. But last time also getting something. Because then I stopped working in Budapest. And then now it's CD. But I had to go back to Amsterdam. Then I planned a trip to Prague, which was okay. Nikki's model is okay. But Nikki also is sometimes on a power trip. Because we also had that issue. Like, I wanted to get paid. A certain amount and then they wanted mm-hmm. me to get it in dollars and sorry but dollars and euros yeah. yeah you're not getting paid as much no no so I was like no I don't want to do it and then I eventually also didn't get booked by her anymore and I'm like you just I want <clears throat> these performers to accept these super shitty and low rate and poor working conditions and just all this bullshit yeah 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 so then I went to Paris, and that is not a good story because I was booked by Rick Angel for a porn show premium. Now they mm-hmm. changed their name to Let's Do It because they rebranded. But basically, they, they raped me on set. Oh, wow. I'm so uh, sorry you experienced yeah. that. That's absolutely awful. Yeah, and then when I spoke up about it, when I spoke up about it, it was three men against one girl. And yeah, then whole Twitter ate me up because you had a lot of girls that were like, no, you would never do something like that. I'm like, were you there? My doctor has a whole, excellent, like, I couldn't sit normal, it hurt for weeks. And people just trying to victim blame me. Like, like I yeah, was completely to ruin, ruin that people are career. trying to yeah that it's not being handled is that your consent was violated and all that and that people are like well that could never be that person I mean I feel like the adult industry has so much room to come to terms with like the consent issues yeah. on set because especially in that situation where there's no women on set and even the dudes would probably just be like well it didn't look like that to me that's and complete it was bullshit like, it there didn't needs happen to be on camera it happened in between the stills because he just shoved his dick in there and it was not I never agreed to double vaginal but he just did it so I was um, with my back to him and he just did it wow and I'm then, so sorry 
and I thought I already posted on Twitter. I don't like that stuff. I would never do it. Mm-hmm. And then I had girls coming for me because I said he was not okay. It's, I feel like that's how this industry sadly works. And I think as much as on this podcast, I want to talk about the fun, great things about this industry. This is also needs to be talked about because this shit does happen. And even when performers have multiple people coming out saying that this happened or this happened, or even evidence of harassment on Twitter from those people who committed these acts, I feel like there's just not enough done because so many of these men either are powerful enough that they're still going to get cast or they own their own website and they're going to find some girl who's going to shoot with them. Exactly. Or because they're such a powerful director, companies don't dare to do anything against them and you just keep using them. And then mm-hmm. you as a girl don't get booked anymore. Or as a performer, after you speak up about something, you just don't get booked anymore. And it, after I spoke up, there was one company and it was private who wanted to book me. And mm-hmm. after months not not doing any scenes because I I wasn't I wasn't in the right headspace to do it. Course, but I had to yeah. do it because I was running out of money and because I quit working at the coffee shop to do porn full time mm-hmm. and I didn't do online content as much as I did later. So then I did the shoot for private, which was like super nice. Scarlet Revel. It's a great oh director. yeah she's so Truly nice. great yes I one of the nice female directors in the industry mm-hmm. with Gus man he's also so funny like that made me want to go back yeah and then I went to LA at the end of 2018 because I wanted to go to my first AVN in 2019 and I had a pretty like a good expo experience like for yeah what was first your expo. first experience going to avn did it seem like really big or you kind of were like going around the world shooting porn at that point yeah. though so it probably oh, seemed pretty was, manageable so my first time avn was probably the busiest i ever had it because mm. i'm still with the vip connect and then i met also some of my female fans which was what was pretty cool because i was like most of the time you just have dudes coming and get your autograph yeah. or pictures. But then there was this girl and she was like, yeah, I want to buy three prints. One is for me and two are for my friends. And can you sign them? One is for a guy's birthday. And then I was like, you want to take a picture and make them jealous too? <laughs> so yeah, it was fun. Like I had fun. Mm-hmm. It was fun seeing Cardi B live. Oh my free. God. Yeah, uh, if we can talk about that experience for a minute, that was um, I brought my partner to their first AVN, and we were dating for like a year at that point. And before, my partner's like, "I'll do anything in the world if you get me to meet Cardi B or even be by Cardi B." And we went on stage during that rush. It was yeah. like, like was so fun. Also, like Cardi B won a Grammy the next weekend for best yeah. rap album. Like, oh. where were you during? The whole Cardi B thing. Did you make it on stage? Um, I was too. Sh- uh, um, you know, the more I got into porn, the the less of, of people like her I became. <laughs> so my ex boyfriend was like, "Go on stage, go on stage," and I was like, "No, no, <laughs> it's too many people." No. Oh, it was truly crazy. Girls were getting stepped on. Like, yeah. so there was one point where I was like face to face with Cardi B, and there was like five girls under her getting stepped on by girls in like stilettos and I'm just like trying to help them it was a very strange experience trying to help people who are under like Cardi B's feet it was so weird yeah yeah this industry will have people step on you yeah I mean I guess that's maybe symbolism for the industry (laughs) oh that's just that's dark (laughs) So in 2019, mm-hmm. I still worked for Shy, but then she started to get me less and less work because I didn't do that thing, you know, because she is like, oh, you should marry someone for a green card and then you can live here and always work for me. Yeah, just be a robot. 
But because I didn't do that and I have a boyfriend, she just didn't give me work anymore. She canceled scenes. Like I had a company contact me like, hey, why is your scene canceled? And why did she also try to can? She had the company pay a cancellation fee when she was the one who canceled the scene. Wow. So she wow. had me keep getting tested, 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 but no work. So was she taking last- the cancellation fee? Yeah. And okay. So I want. I think I she wanna... was also suggesting other models to get. Yeah, my I just want to explain to like the podcast people. So when you're a performer, if your scene doesn't happen, it's already booked. You'll get paid a kill fee or like a cancel fee. That's like maybe yeah. a third of what you would actually make. So she was just pocketing that, and you weren't getting any of it. No, and I, my last wow. scene I did was with Mike Adriano and with Luna. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people like that scene and I liked working with Mike but then when I work with Luna what happens is when you work with another person and you can notice they're not into it Mm -hmm. then it's just the vibe is off you have to work with somebody who doesn't yeah Yeah, who's giving as much back as you're giving like it's really yeah I feel like porn performance is so much about not only performing well yourself, but making your partner look really good and making it look like, oh my God, these are the best two people in the world at having sex, basically. Yeah, I I killed that scene. Like (laughs) nobody noticed that I didn't actually enjoy it all the way. And still, it gets promoted all over. But then I started to get into making my own content because- Mm -hmm. I kept getting tested and not paid. Yeah. Like, no, no work. So I was like, let me try content making. And then after getting more into content making, I had the uh, indie clip artist uh, fan nomination. And I was like, yeah, for AVN. Was that your first AVN nomination? Was that your first AVN nomination? Yes, yes. And it was funny because I, it was also the time I told my agent to go fuck herself and take me <laughs> off my off the website. So, That's... and then I got my first... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry you just cut out. I think we're running into some difficulty again, maybe, with the Wi-Fi. Are you there? Is it the internet? I'm there. You froze on my side, though. Oh, okay. I think we're back, maybe. Hopefully. Can you hear me? Um, vaguely. I'm going to quick pause, and you want to try to rejoin? Yeah. Okay. Okay, it looks like it's back. Okay. Every, everyone's gonna have to deal with it there there will be fine <laughs> yeah it's um it's yeah so what it. what was your response when you found out you got your first ABN nomination um I was like is this like really happening do I have that many fans that would vote for me and it was super cute because my mom made a twitter account so she can vote for me oh that's so wholesome so were you in amsterdam when you found out or were you in the states yeah yeah i was in amsterdam when i found out i was at home and then then i came to uh, celebrate my first thanksgiving with my ex Mm. in uh, 2019 and then i went also to avn again in 2020 with doja cat yeah so and then it was fun because I was there without the help of an agent that's so badass that you told your agent to go fuck themselves and then you got nominated for the biggest award in porn on the planet yeah like, I think props that's like such a I think fan that's nomination a, such an amazing story more. yeah I yeah. think just I think with AVN like I just think it's such a it's such a global thing where you really have performers from around the world that yeah. I just feel like being nominated or even just being part of it. It's just such a yeah. real honor. And yeah, that's so yeah. amazing that you, I didn't know you were essentially, you told your agent to go fuck yourself. And then that happened because I was just like, oh yeah, 
you're shooting a lot in yeah. LA. That's just kind of how it looks from the outside. Yeah, and and people were surprised that I told Chai to like let it be because I didn't do what she wanted, so she didn't get me the work, mm-hmm. and I know I would never be what she wanted from me. So then I started to work more on the things I wanted to work on. And then in 2020, I also did the expo. But then because I wasn't with my agent, I don't I don't think I had any visitors. Like nobody came. I mm. was just sitting there. And eventually I was like the other performers and camp performers, like, hey, you want to get high? And then we just went to smoke <laughs> outside. <laughs> I, I feel like your arc is extremely Dutch that so you worked at a coffee shop, then you got into sex yeah. work and then you're, and then at a sex work convention, you're like, that's smoke weed. Yeah. I, I, I love that. I lo- That's terrific. I made a few friends that I still talk to. And then, yeah, we had AVN and I still made some content in the US and then we had mm-hmm. COVID. Yeah, did you just essentially essentially just stop shooting during COVID? Okay, I think it paused again. I think it'll be all right, though. I feel like it just is going back and forth, so I'm just going to keep talking. Yeah, oh, no. Okay. And- yeah, so did you just completely so- stop shooting during COVID for like a year or something? Or when did you get back to it? I shot with no, I I shot with nobody and I shot my own stuff, mm-hmm. but I didn't shoot with anybody anymore. I did a scene with somebody this year, but we'll get to that later. Mm-hmm. So the whole year of the whole COVID thing, I got better at making my own content and producing. So last year was pretty great for somebody working from home in the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> oh i think it's cutting out again dollars to do stop yeah is it doing something again yeah i was can you repeat yourself i'm so sorry or if you i can pause it you can rejoin or the whole Okay, I think it's working again. It's so hard to tell. How do you join? Um, I'm going to pause and then yeah. you just want to exit out and rejoin and we'll see. Oh. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> hopefully this... Thank you. Yeah, of course. Hopefully this continues oh. for a second. Even if not, I feel like we at least have yeah. a really good 30 minutes of you really like going into porn stuff. So hopefully it starts up again. Huh. Yes, please. I hope so. I really want if it's um yeah, let's just try it right now. Or I can even yeah, we'll see. Okay. Um um it's still being pretty weird huh i don't know okay we're back hopefully it works i guess international wi-fi is kind of (laughs) sketchy like that we're trying to do this from across the globe from each other yeah um okay so yeah, um, so we're making it work. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna ask you a few more questions because we're having technical yeah. difficulties. I want to keep your whole morning, and it's like midnight here on in California. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so you've kind of shot all over the world. Like you've shot a bunch in Europe. You've shot a bunch in um, LA, Vegas, kind of all over. Where's your favorite city to shoot? Like, what's been your best experience? Yeah. Oh, I think 
started in LA and I'm part in Barcelona because I I really enjoyed work. The weather, the weather's amazing. In LA, they made you go in a fucking bikini in January, even though <laughs> it's not that hot. No, it's not that hot in January um, there. I think like AVN in Vegas. No, and then I, I have- is like every porn girl having to dress warm, even though they're there for a porn convention. I always think that's kind of funny. Jen, or first award show, I made the mistake of wearing an all studded pants. Mm-hmm. So it ha- was super sparkly and pretty. Palms were pressing in my Oh leg, no. Yeah. And they have to sit for hours. <laughs> Yeah. It's a nightmare. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of AVN choices that look great on the red carpet. Like, and, and then, then you're like the next... Yeah, then you're like, oh, I have to <laughs> sit on big. a like a folding chair for like hours. <laughs> for hours. And then that even though it looked so great on the runway, it was not no, it was not doing it. So the next one and I also fell my first AVN, like you fell. I tripped on the I tripped on the red carpet, but it was the beginning. The beginning. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Any picture? I'll be on. I tripped. Then I had a cut from my. So dude, I'll wear a skirt and said I look great and it looks all super fancy, but I got my nails from Target. <laughs> yeah, I, I, feel, I, I feel from which I feel like porn award shows like you get, have people wearing the most interesting <laughs> things and figuring out how to do it. Yeah. From- Okay. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Okay. Before it cut off. Oh no. Okay. I think it's back. Hopefully. Okay. You were like totally there for a second, and then you cut out, and now you're still there. Okay. So um Yay. yeah, my question was before it like went all weird and robotic. Um, where's your favorite place to shoot? Like out of every place you've shot all over the world. Okay, so favorite place in Europe is Spain. Mm. To be honest, Barcelona and Sijes. I like Sijes the most because, to be honest, Barcelona kind of stinks in the city because it's so warm, and then you smell the sewer and everything. Oh, you know? no. That's, that's so, not a good mix. Yeah. So in Sijes, no, in Sijes, it's more like, Closer to the beach, so all you smell is the beach, is the water of the sea, mm. and they had the mountains. And basically, it's like you know the woodland hills area where you have the the villas, and then mm-hmm. you also have corn performers who own villas, and then you work there in their villa. Oh wow, that, that sounds cool. pretty so, ideal. It. I thought if I ever want to move somewhere, I want to move to see Jess. Because mm. you have like a mountains and a beach. It's small. It's for Europe. It's not that expensive. Like where you will get a nine hundred euro apartment with a balcony, a three bedroom, a nice kitchen close by wow. the beach. That's perfect. I don't think you will find that in California. <laughs> oh, you can't find anything <laughs> exactly. for nine hundred euros here. Not even close. <laughs> Maybe a shoebox. <laughs> Even that, that's pushing it. Yeah, it's it's just so wild to live in such an expensive city. Whenever I travel, every place feels so cheap where it's just like, oh, that's the price of stuff? Sure. Um, yeah, so I was with um, Curious Judas for a long time and he lived in LA, mm-hmm. but I broke up with him last year because I didn't see myself live in the US, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I didn't mind going there, but I like Europe too much. The food just tastes different. 
The only supermarket in the U.S. I really enjoy going to is Trader Joe's and Whole Foods because their food doesn't taste fake. <laughs> like yeah, they- when I bought a bell pepper at Ralph, it tastes different than the one from Trader Joe's. It really does. I see. I'm from the Midwest originally. I'm from this really small town actually named Holland. That's all Dutch and stuff, which is really weird. But there's this gigantic grocery store there. It's called Meyer, And it's like my favorite grocery store in the world. It's all of them are 24 hours. They have like as much clothes as like a Target, but they have like everything. You can buy tires there. You can buy all your groceries you can buy dvds you can buy sporting equipment it's even more inclusive than target (laughs) yeah they they sell pets there they sell paint like literally everything you can imagine yeah so even like moving to the west coast i think all the all the grocery stores kind of suck here like yeah i like the food at whole foods like it tastes way more real but i don't know i want like the 24-hour convenience of everything yeah, well, I like Trader Joe's because um, their Gouda cheese was the closest to actual Dutch cheese. Because I had multiple Gouda cheeses in the U.S., but I was like, no, no, this is not cutting it. Are they actually the ones from Holland or not? No, I don't think they're anything from Holland. <laughs> like, oh, no, there just, are. <laughs> and, I don't, I don't know, because at Ralph's, they sold, like, a Budapest, like, a farmer's mm-hmm. cheese, and I was like, hmm, this, this doesn't taste anything like the real thing. Yeah, I get, I get cheese from, like, the Netherlands a lot. Like, we probably have three or four Gouda's from the yeah. Netherlands right now. Yeah, my mom just came out here, um, I think, like, three weeks ago and brought a bunch of Dutch food, and yeah oh, yeah it was really nice I'm feeling extremely homesick I haven't been back to Holland Michigan in like three years it's the oh, longest shit. I've been because of the pandemic and then I was going to move to the Netherlands um my partner also there they also had an office there so before oh. the pandemic we were going to move there for like six months but obviously the pandemic yeah. happened and I really haven't left California since oh shit mm. Yeah, I haven't left Holland since I came back. When did you go back? Last year in February. So before that, I was still in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And then in February 2020, I've been, the end of of February 2020, I've been here. And then you you had the whole down so... You can only go outside if you want to buy groceries and I don't know. Even now with the new rules here, it's still kind of weird Mm because yesterday they were like, oh, the cases went up again. And I'm like, how? Because the people who are not vaccinated and I'm not vaccinated for medical reasons. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I saw your um, post about that. Have to get tested and I don't mind getting tested. Yeah. Well, my doctor who's who's known me for years advice against it because Mm -hmm. of my chronic illness but it's too much to explain because (laughs) yeah you're you're all good um but um, yeah now the cases went up again and i'm like it's because you make people who have the vaccination don't get tested and then Oh no, it's freezing again. Hopefully it doesn't fully freeze. And then you have the IA. Oh no, I think it froze again. Or maybe not. Are you still there? I think it's still there. Yeah. Okay. If I go sit closer by my Wi Fi. Okay. Thanks. I appreciate it. I guess it's just raining in the Netherlands. So this is happening. It just is what it is. It is fine. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think she's just using the recording, not my getting out of bed face. Oh no, definitely oh, not. I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna post your face. I'm blast. No, <laughs> of course not. I'm like thank I'm, you because I'm not evil like this that. This is like one of those. I woke up like this moment. <laughs> yeah you're getting like the best version of my face right now because usually I do these like early in the morning so you're like have leftover cam face right now super cute so thanks I appreciate that so yeah it seems to be better she she looked like that (laughs) I showed a picture of you so that's why she was like oh yeah that's sweet um yeah this is the cameo mom hello <laughs> hi so but, mm, to come back i think it's the situation of um vaccinated and unvaccinated and people who get tested and don't get tested and then they mix that all together and now the cases are going up again so i'm like what are we gonna have another lockdown it's it's like so hard to know what's going on anywhere right now like no. here we like were open for maybe a month or two and then it was oh my god everything's gonna go back in full lockdown but then now you have to be vaccinated to go like anywhere here but everyone still wears masks all the time so oh. but then I went down to um SoCal last week for an award show and there like barely anyone was wearing masks so it's just like so Mm. random based on the cities I guess well I think it's kind of funny how they're like "Mm, if you're vaccinated it doesn't matter if you get tested but mm, if you are vaccinated you can still carry coronavirus because now I think the problem here is everyone gets tested and you can get you get a negative test like you can get tested if you go out for dinner because your test is only valid for 24, 24 hours. Mm-hmm. So if you want to do something the next day, you have to get tested again. But the people really? who are wow. vaccinated, the people who are vaccinated, they don't have to get tested at all. And they just have to scan and then they go inside. But what if somebody who's already vaccinated is carrying it with them without knowing? And then the people who are tested but not vaccinated get it from there because now the cases all went up and it doesn't make sense to me even for a festival or going a night out, you have to have your QR code and then... Oh, it's by a QR can, code there? Yeah, and then they scan and see if you're tested and they check the ID, if it's the name that matches. So they really want you to have a negative test mm-hmm. when you go in something. But then it's kind of conflicting when all the cases go up again. Like what happened? How did 40,000 people get COVID again when we were going down and now it's going upwards again? And yeah, yeah. I feel like this whole pandemic just feels like it's never going to end. It feels like every no. time it's like, oh, stuff's going to get normal again. Like, I feel like here in the States, we had two normal months and then it was just back to it. Yeah. It's just, yeah. yeah. Here, it's also kind of the same because. Uh, September was kind of normal because then everyone could get tested and go out again. And then October was kind of normal, but now we're going maybe back to another lockdown because how will they do it? Yeah, it's uh, definitely not a thing I saw coming during all of these things. So I was like, oh yeah, the whole world's going to shut down, essentially. When for- I was at AVN last year, I never thought this would happen yeah I remember like hearing vaguely about it and I was so naive I was just like oh yeah like they, they said this about SARS they said this about swine flu Ebola just, they said it about all mm-hmm. kind of so it was like the last time they said this it also didn't really affect me or there was and then there was a whole lockdown and that was totally new and then they lifted the lockdown and then it came back again and it's been going back and forth like that the whole time. I don't think we'll ever go back to normal. This is the new normal, I think. Yeah, it's so hard to imagine, like, life being completely normal again. It's, uh, I don't know. 
I feel like maybe it's just because we're so far in it that we've been in this for like a year and a half now that like if you look at history pandemics end and stuff yeah. but it just feels like it's never gonna end yeah but mm, I still I still have my doubts about COVID because every time there's a new variant and I don't want to seem like a conspiracy theorist because I believe you we can still get it from everybody but how did they have a vaccination so quick when for other things it took so long like who says it's not man-made and everyone wants to blame China but who says it's not all the government in it because we have a shortage on housing like here in the Netherlands they come with the solution yeah you have to get a roommate but what if you're antisocial like me what if you don't like people mm. Like, because of also having men harass me, like, I worked in a coffee shop even during during my career, but I ended it because I got stalkers. That's so fucked up. I mean, that's, like, such a real thing that happens in the industry, and yeah, it's just, I'm so sorry you had to deal with that. Yeah, as far as COVID, like, I, I think it makes sense that it's, like, obviously like real and all that stuff i think like yeah. every hundred years People you're gonna don't have believe in COVID are i think it's just like every hundred years there's gonna be some crazy thing like this like there was swine flu and like the yeah. world wars and all this stuff and i feel like for so long like our parents generation and our generation we didn't have this like direct thing that shut the world down and it's just like so no, unthinkable exactly. And it's just like when you really like think about how bad it is like there's like 4,000 people dying every day and yeah. like you just don't think about it in it because I feel like our minds almost can't handle that like information every day when you wake up and you're like wow that's how many people are gonna die today of this thing that they yeah. still don't really have control of no. um I was listening to this podcast today and apparently there's um all these celebrities I think Kim Kardashian was one I, Chrissy Teigen might have been another one but they um oh. they sent a letter to all the leaders of the world saying we need to stop this pandemic now which is I think the funniest thing that Kim Kardashian oh. and all these other celebrities feel like they are the ones who are gonna make that happen like how are you gonna make it happen with your money like yeah just writing a letter I mean just give it <laughs> to the poor people just give it to the poor people that actually need that money because you guys you know my my grandma said the funniest thing she says mm -hmm. people who have the most money are often the dumbest people because they just spend their money on bullshit yeah i mean when you have that much money you're just spending your money on bullshit <laughs> it's so like, extra. look at elon musk look at all of the dumb shit he's pouring money yeah. into for no reason oh my God. like like There's this whole space race with billionaires people. yeah like when he went to space i was like how the fuck did this asshole go to space how the how does that work i'm and then, i'm really so and then NSF, i saw this meme oh go on no no i saw this meme where mm -hmm. they said his face was edited so he never really went to space <laughs> that was the theory behind it so i'm like hmm, kind of makes sense it's something that could happen like actually happen yeah i mean when you have that much money you can pay people to do whatever that you want them to you can say oh yeah i did this and there's gonna be people who are gonna back you up when you have that much money yeah um, it's all so, about the money look at trump yeah. look at how many supporters that asshole got yeah that's that and the pandemic didn't see either of those coming if you ask yeah. chelsea like in 2013 nope no idea so i have um no. one more question for you actually first i want to say do you know how hated elon musk is in the bay area that i live i'm really lucky during the whole pandemic uh, my partner and i got to move to a nice neighborhood and um like all I'm of glad. our crime yeah, all of our problems are very like chill in our neighborhood. But what people do is it's just people defacing Teslas and like putting Teslas on blocks and stealing all their wheels, which is the funniest thing to see. Just like a oh, Tesla on blocks. Yeah. yeah. 
that is very funny to see because there are such luxury cars and I understand mm -hmm. electric cars are the future and all but I just grew a hate for Elon Musk and I I sat in a few Teslas and I always end up car sick because oh really you don't feel because it's not like you're moving, but at the same time, you're moving. So with all the bumps, and sometimes they go too fast. So then I get nauseous. Mm. People tend to go faster in a Tesla. I don't know why, because they're like, oh, it's my fancy car. Let me show it off. But yeah, no, I mean, like, I like <laughs> regular cars. Yeah, I want to feel like... that I actually move. See, I'm so not a car person. Like, I hate LA because you're always in a car. I'm like, I, I like condensed drive. cities. I can't drive. I can't either. It's I fine. Like to walk. Yeah, I that's I like SF because of that. I like Amsterdam because of that. I like New York because of that, where you can just like walk to anything you need to do. Yeah, San Francisco is on my list to go to because yeah. Please do. Please hit me up when you're here. And they said yeah, the we'll weather is like weed. the Netherlands. Uh, it's not <laughs> yes, quite as please, cold. If you come to Amsterdam too. Yeah, you know, of course. Better. Yeah, I mean, see where I'm from, it's like so cold and stuff. So it's just like I can deal with it, I feel like. Um, yeah, where I'm from, it's like it's about two hours north of Chicago. So it's complete snow, ice. Oh, yeah all the terrible things yeah it's not it's not great <laughs> so um i have one final question for you let's no, say i do th have to admit mm. yeah oh go on no i i wanted to say about this we haven't had snow here like the last snow we had was the disgusting wet snow where it turns gray and smudgy because it's not really snow. It's not consistent enough. So it's more like a slushy. But I miss actual snow. Like we haven't had a good thick snow in a while, I feel. Yeah, in in but, Holland, Holland, Michigan, it's yeah, complete. We get like, I think like probably it's not uncommon to get like two or three meters of snow a night. Like it just kind of wow. happens. It's Wow. so cold in the winter everyone's so depressed it's kind of a real issue <laughs> because like by the time february oh. hits you're so sick of it there's just nothing that you want to deal with anymore yeah i think we didn't even have snow for christmas last year but we did have snow in february and there was the disgusting slushy snow so i was like why didn't it snow happened around christmas so we at least had a white christmas but now we have gray smush everywhere <laughs> that's that's the thing i miss living in california so much like seasons like we just don't have them here it's just kind of the same year round and then there's like the time yeah. where there's fires and like those are our two oh, seasons yeah yeah, yeah yeah i remember so the fires they're they're not fun we had a day where the entire sky was orange so oh, no. yeah, that was like a day where it was like, okay, we're already dealing with COVID, but then it's like, okay, the sky isn't blue anymore. It was oh. very hard to deal with. Yeah, I, I understand. That, that doesn't sound okay. So <laughs> like no fire here. Thank God. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> so I have one final question. Uh, Let's say you I could wake up tomorrow and one thing in porn would magically be changed what would you have that thing be that there is no more mm, use of cultural clothes and stuff like yesterday i saw a movie that said arabian night and there was not one arabic performer in it they were none of them were Arab performers and I'm like how is it Arabian Nights without actual women from the ethnicity that's so fucked and, up like even the hijab porn like mm, mm, I hate it I just wish they would stop using cultural clothes and 
stop sexualizing the young age of girls because they always want the barely legal mm-hmm. kind of shit. And yeah, I hate it. Yeah, that shit's it. so I, gross. Uh, like the younger I, you look, the the more fancy you get. Like it's kind of creepy. It's like it makes me think of how many of those men are actually pedophiles instead of like. Yeah, it's a little sketchy when you're yeah. like, I only watch yeah, yeah. teen porn. It's like, yeah, like you're an adult. Flag, red you red probably flag. shouldn't. I, just as, yeah, I'm, yeah, I never, I feel like I stopped looking at teen porn when I stopped being a yeah. teen, you know, <laughs> where it's like, yeah, why would yeah. you look at that? I just don't understand the appeal of that. I don't think I ever really watched it. What I annoyed was the the old and young scenes that you have like a guy in his 60s with a girl who's like 20. So like, I was actually in one of those, but it was a lesbian scene. Um, so I I should have done more research. It was a great scene. It's one of my favorite scenes. Actually, I had her on the podcast, Magdalene. I didn't realize how old she was. So I got sent the thing of like, oh, do you want to shoot with this woman? And I'm like, she's gorgeous. She's British. I have a huge thing for British accents. It's kind of embarrassing. So I'm like, yes, 100%. And then like when we got to set, she was like telling me when she was like doing movies and stuff. And she was talking about in the 70s and 80s. And then I started doing math in my head. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. So that was like a very unexpected experience. I was only like 20, I think, maybe 21. But yeah, it was a very fun scene to do. And yeah, I've definitely done My that kind of porn. Hmm? So what happened in that first week of Budapest, I got booked for Mature. Hmm. But apparently that lady was not an adult star. She was the dominatrix who just did this on the extra side. And at first, she looked cute. But then I was in shock of how many piercings she had. Because I don't want to be rude, but I never thought like a vagina could endure so many piercings because it was like (laughs) row after row after row. It was like like six piercings on one side of her lip and six on the other. And then I was like, how does this work? (laughs) I was amazed. That is a lot of metal on a very on a very small area. And then she had like the nipple piercings crossed. And I was mm. like, this lady is hardcore. I've never seen somebody with that many piercings. And did you have to bottom for her? Yes, yes, yes. See, I would be terrified in that situation. That would go from like, wait, if the Dom is doing this much pain to themselves, what are they going to do to me? Yeah, no, I got, uh, I got lucky in a way that um, we did it quickly, but the director was not nice. I got like, uh, I liked working for Mariska X more for Mature mm-hmm. than with that guy. Because for mm-hmm. her, I got paid more too. For the other scene, <clears throat> and that's the shitty part, I didn't know anything about the performer. So there, I was kind of in shock. But if I would cancel the shoot, I would have to pay 100 bucks. But I only got paid 200 for that scene. I mean, then I guess it's not losing out on that much money. No, no, <laughs> but I was like, let me just do it and not lose money instead of, yeah, making this woman feel bad because I was afraid of so many fear things. And now <laughs> people still like that scene. So, yeah, I it's yay. sometimes a wonder the stuff people like that you're like, oh, that's like totally not a good scene of me. And people are like, this is the best piece of porn I've ever seen. It's so wild. It was my first girl girl on camera. So it was just so awkward. So awkward. <laughs> but well, thank you. Then, well, yeah. You've like shared so much about your experience in porn and like I, it's so valuable. And just like, thank you so much for coming on this podcast. Can Thanks you like give? Can you give everyone your links so they can find you? Oh shit! Um, so my at is Esperanza Horno on Twitter, and then basically my pin tweet has all my links because 
You can just Google Esperanza del Horno and you will find everything. I swear. Well, thank you so much for going. Many seeds. Please, yeah. Look her up. Give her your money. All of that. She makes amazing. They make amazing work. And yeah. Thank you so much again. I hope you have a nice rest of your day. I'm going to crash in a second because it's like 1230 here. Yes. But thanks so much for. um, Thank you. You and I'll retweet it comes out. Yeah, yeah, it should be out in the next few weeks. Yeah, yeah. have a nice rest of your night. I hope um next time you're in the states you can find you. real Gouda. Yes, <laughs> yes, please. And I hope we can find time to smoke. Thank you. Bye. Smoking weed and tea and cheese. Thank you.